corrosion scanning with phased array, we pretty much have to put something on the front of the probe because by design, that's not a wear phase. Normally with phased array scanning, we attach a wedge like this one right here. The problem with wedges is that you end up with a repeater signal. This is like a delay line signal that you get with a pen probe. And this is just the sound bouncing in the plastic. One annoying thing is that depending on the height of the wedge and the thickness of your part, you may find that you've got echoes that are sitting on top of each other, which makes it really hard to do echo to echo. For example, this is a 20 millimeter high zero degree wedge. When we do the math, we find that it takes 8.5 microseconds for the sound to get down. Now, of course, the return trips are free, so we're just doing the down trip. 8.5 microseconds converted to steel is going to end up being about 50 millimeters, which is exactly what we see on the screen here. So if I take this probe and wedge combination and put it on a one inch steel block, you can see that second back wall echo is pretty much exactly where that repeater signal is. Those two coincident signals is going to make data interpretation for corrosion scanning really difficult. So what can we do? Number one, you can just get yourself a wedge with a different height on it. You're going to push that repeater signal either before or preferably after the second back wall echo of your corrosion and get it out of the way. Another thing you could do is take the wedge off completely and use the probe bare. Now, I don't recommend that you actually do this because the face of a phased array transducer is not meant to be a wear face. We're going to run a little experiment, but before I do, I want to have a point of comparison. So with the wedge on and the back wall echo on this one inch piece of seal step to about 80 to 100 percent, we get a dead zone or an entry ringing of around two millimeters, maybe just a little bit less, say about a millimeter and a half. And we're going to try to remember that number. For this, I'll use a Vermont 10 megahertz 64 element transducer. And when I go to place this onto the part, those little screws are going to get in the way. They're captive screws, so you have to kind of give it a little bit of back pressure and then back screw and just get it so that it starts to come out and then it won't be interfering. I've removed the wedge, so I actually have to go back into here and take this back to contact. With the probe completely bare, we'll get that signal back to around 80 to 100 percent. And you can see my entry signal is at about the same distance. It's about a millimeter and a half. Really no big change from when we had the wedge on. But the point was to get rid of that wedge repeater. And with no wedge, we have no wedge repeater. Probe is off. There is nothing on the screen. I put it back on and I've got two perfectly clear back wall echoes with no interference. But you would not want to run a scan like this because phased array transducers are expensive. And again, that's not a wear face. So what can we do? Some manufacturers make contact wear faces. You can get these from Evident. This is a great idea. They're not terribly expensive. They're made to fit the casing of the transducer. They just, there's a sticky piece. You take that off, stick it right on the face of your transducer, and you're good to go. You could put a protective tape on the face of the transducer, not unlike what we do in eddy current with a Teflon tape to protect the face of the probe. So we're going to try this stuff out and I'm also going to use Gorilla Tape. I'm going to do a completely unscientific test. I've got each one of these taped to this aluminum block and I'm going to sand the daylights out of it. And you can see here that I'm going to go with the Gorilla Tape. It seems to last a little bit better. So everything's completely dry. I'm going to take this and just wrap it over the face of the transducer, making sure that there's no air bubbles in there at all, and then wrap this around the side. And that totally did not. <laughs> That's a piece for the blooper reel. I actually thought that was going to work just fine, but I forgot. Oils from your finger, little remnants of couplant will keep that from sticking. So now that this is nicely shined up and beautiful, we're going to try that again. And it sticks no problems. I'll put this back on the part and immediately we can see we have to add a little bit more gain than when it was dry. That makes sense. We'll turn that up right here. There you can see we've got no repeating signal from a wedge because we really don't have a wedge. But all these little vibrations at the beginning, what are those? Those are actually the wedge repeaters from inside the tape. So even though we don't have a full wedge on the transducer, we still have wedge repeaters. And that's because the tape is like a really thin wedge. So it's got lots of wedge repeaters, but they're all smashed, sort of like an accordion, all pushed up towards the top of the screen. So what does that do to our inspection? This is why we took that baseline reading of the dead zone or the entry signal before. It was about a millimeter and a half. 
with the wedge on or with the Pro Bear. With the Gorilla Tape, you can see now that it's pushed out perhaps a little bit past two, maybe two and a half millimeters. So if you can live with that dead zone area, then maybe using a protective wear face like this is okay for you. I did this once on a job, very carefully monitoring the face of the transducer, but I wanted it irrigated. And the nice thing about some of these casing styles, in particular this A12, is that you can actually back the screws right out and put in an irrigation nipple. I'm going to take one of the nipples here from off of my IHC ring, and I'm going to attach it right into where that screw came out of. Then you have to punch a hole through the bottom of the tape in here to make sure the water flows. Phased array transducers are not meant to be used bare. You should be using a wedge or some sort of protective face to ensure that you're not damaging your expensive phased array transducer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.